Matt here for Tackle Train. Welcome out to the Halftime Report. And uh, for the Halftime crew out there, we should be live back coming up on Monday. We've been having some issues with Zoom connecting to YouTube. Hopefully that gets fixed by this coming Monday so that we can be live with the Halftime crew. But here is the recorded version. And I want to quickly talk about kind of what's impacting the market today, what's in the news. CNBC today is reporting that the White House expects a trade truce with China in a very important meeting with between the U.S. and China tomorrow. Now, we've been hearing this for, for six months now, and fool me once, fool me twice, we all know that story, but there does seem to be a lot of information, a lot of momentum, a lot of positive news coming into this very important trade meeting. Now, let's, let's talk about the outcomes here. A positive trade deal, a truce, maybe not a deal, but a truce. Does it impact positive to the market? Most likely, yes. Most likely, yes. But it most likely also has a little bit of limited upward movement in price. Since the market has already been going up over the course of the last month, and you're kind of overextended coming into these all-time highs. So you do have upside potential coming into some positive news, and a breakout of 20, uh, 2970 would be significant, in my opinion, with an obvious target of 3000 So maybe a 0 0.2 points upward movement in price coming, out of, uh, coming into Sunday night with the futures open, Monday with the cash open. You do have you know, some decent positive upside. But what happens if we don't get that trade deal? And we've had a lot of momentum coming into this market, sitting at the all-time highs. You most likely have a little bit more downside risk than you do upside potential. And when you have a situation like that, and you're thinking about Friday entering into trades versus maybe waiting until the news comes out on Saturday, that to me is probably wise. Wait and see to see what happens out of the G20 between the U.S., between China, and then we're going to have clear selling coming into the market, coming into the Monday. So obviously we'll be here Monday morning with you guys to really kind of track everything, how the market reacted with the futures open on Sunday. What you know, good, bad, ugly does not matter. We're going to be here to analyze that. But when you have a major news event coming up, and we're on day two of the G20 with Trump and President Xi Jinping meeting tomorrow, it's just a matter of being patience coming in, waiting for the weekend to kind of get in the rear view mirror, have the G20 get into the rear view mirror, have President Trump and Xi Jinping get into the rear view mirror, and then we have clear selling coming into Monday. So that's kind of the way I'm approaching the market today from a G20. Now, the second bit of news kind of impacts the banking sector in terms of XLF. And you had a nice little gap up here today, and you're up 1.5% on the day, perhaps even breaking out of this resistance level at 27.50 with an expected target to get back up in the, into the all-time highs at 28.15. Now, the news that was stated today was the Fed came out and said there was no issue with with capital return plans from the banks. What that is, that is called a stress test. Now the banks pass the stress test. And so when you have the banks passing a test from the central bank, you obviously have some positive momentum. Now I will be the first to, to throw a little bit of cold water since Deutsche Bank pass the stress test as well. And if a terrible bank like Deutsche Bank pass the test, it's probably not that difficult of a, of a test to pass. But you did have positive momentum coming out of Goldman Sachs. You had positive momentum coming out of JP Morgan as well, breaking out of, of that resistance level right here at 110, 111. So you have a lot of movement coming into the banking sector. And when you have a lot of this positive movement coming into the banking sector, it's certainly going to lift up the S&P 500. It's going to lift up the Dow Jones even if it's going to be a little bit muted because the market doesn't want to take a strong position coming into the end of the G20 and obviously with, with, with Trump and Xi Jinping tomorrow. So you do have positive headwinds, but a lot of that is just bank, based on the banks coming out and passing the Fed stress test. So keep an eye on the banks perhaps breaking out and helping this market continue to run to, uh, run to the top side. A couple quick earnings reports before we get into and analyzing the market here. First and foremost, Nike, and kind of Nike is one of those stocks that when you see Nike report earnings, it's it's kind of the start of that earnings season. Nike reports earnings of 62 cents per share versus an expectation of 66. They came in line with revenue at 10.2 billion versus 10.2 billion in expectation, and revenue grew 4% year over year. I looked at the earnings report. I didn't see it as a very positive 
positive thing. The market has a muted response here. Nothing really to see here on Nike. It's just in really kind of stagnation. No trading opportunities, in my opinion, on Nike. And then the other earnings report that came out today was Constellation Brands. Constellation Brands, nice little Tackle 25 covered call stock. And when it comes to STZ's earnings here, you came in at 2.21 on the earnings per share, which was an increase over what was expected. They also beat on, on overlying revenues as well with $2.3 billion versus $2.1 billion on the expectation, as well as a positive slight increase in their forward guidance as well. So they beat on earnings per share, they beat on revenue, and they beat on guidance. Real positive response to the earnings. Gaps up 8 points, 4.5%. And you're breaking out of this overhead resistance level right here. If you can close above 195, I'm going to take this as a perhaps a trend reversal type situation as you did have a bearish downtrend, but now you've broken out of that previous level of resistance. And if you can close above that previous level of resistance, that would be confirmation that we are no longer in a bearish downtrend and we're looking to start showing a little bit of a slight bullish uptrend. Keep an eye on $200. That's a significant whole number. It's an old support level over here. So I wouldn't do anything under 200, but at the same time, you have to take this as a positive for Constellation Brands when they beat all three of the expectations from an earnings perspective perspective it gaps over the previous level of resistance and now you just have that old support which is just so coincides with the $200 significant whole number so just keep an eye on that $200 but at the same time I like what I'm seeing in Constellation Brands couple upgrade downgrades Biogen got a downgrade today not not a whole lot of price movement in that downgrade though there's really nothing to see here and then AutoZone got a little bit of a slight upgrade and even though you didn't have a positive response to the upgrade I do like what we're seeing in AutoZone's trend very consistent bullish uptrend you have a bullish retracement slightly underneath that 20-day moving average right there you're coming into this old level of resistance which is a new level of support even though the upgrade didn't have that big of a positive impact, I am loving this trend, loving this pattern, and we should see clear selling at least back up into this overhead, uh, overhead of resistance. So keep an eye on Auto, AutoZone coming into early next week. And then let's look at kind of the market indexes very quickly from a technical perspective. In looking at the S&P 500, Coach Noah and I yesterday in the halftime report, we were talking about how we loved what, was, what we were seeing in this bullish retracement, confirmation, upward movement in price. And if we do get positive movement coming out of the G20, positive movement coming out of the trade deal, we should see a market that does break the all-time highs coming into the futures market on Sunday, coming into the cash open on Monday. So it's a very important moment in time tomorrow. I don't think, like I said initially, I don't think it's, it's, it's wise to get out there and be too aggressive in the marketplace in front of such an important news event. But the beautiful thing is, if we do break out, we should see a great trading opportunity above that all-time high at, 20, at 2970. So keep an eye on that level at 2970. Now, the other indexes, there's they're really nothing to see here. You're looking at a very similar type scenario in the, in the NASDAQ, a very similar type scenario in the Dow Jones as well. So we're just waiting kind of on that G20. But the one thing that we are seeing a little bit of is the Russell 2000 here. The Russell 2000, this little retracement, slowing momentum candle, Upward moving, uh, upward moving in the 20-day moving average, big confirmation, and look what it's trying to do right here. It's trying to break out. Now, you might ask yourself, why is the Russell 2000 running so aggressive when the rest of the market is kind of muted in front of the G20? Well, the last trading day of June is the Russell 2000's rebalancing to where they remove some stocks, add some stocks. And so you're going to have hundreds of different stocks coming in and out of the index as they rebalance to, be, to make it better reflect ever-changing economic, ever-changing technical, ever-changing fundamental conditions. And they do this every year. And so you're seeing a lot of positive movement coming into the Russell 2000. And volume should pick up pretty quickly as we come into the close of today. So keep an eye on this level of resistance right here. If you can break out and close above 1570, that means we are confirming above this old level of support, new resistance here, 
old pivot points over here as well. And you should see a Russell 2000 that tries to play catch up with the other major indexes as it tries to get back up into here at 1620. So keep an eye on 1570 on the Russell 2000. Now let's quickly look at the commodities in the market as well. Let's first start with the dollar index as that has a typical impact on a lot of the other commodities, some more than others. The dollar is in a bearish downtrend. It's doing a little bit of a fade action here. I do expect it to come back up and test 96 and a half, but it doesn't have to do that. What you're seeing right now is a little bit of a low base scenario at these lower levels of support at 96. And so a lot of times as you get overextended in the short term, it will either consolidate forming that low base or it will retrace forming that bearish retracement. Either way, you have to have some degree of slightly bearish bias on the dollar here. A break of 96 and a close of 96 would certainly push the dollar down into the 95 and a half and maybe over the course of the next few weeks down into 95. So keep an eye on 96. That is going to be very, very important. The overhead resistance right here at 96 and a half. Now, as the dollar kind of flatlines over the course of the last couple of days, it is going to have an impact, although slight, on commodities such as oil and gold and silver and things that are priced into the dollar oil right here is just fading it's fading at the old level of resistance right here at sixty dollars it's also a significant whole number and after you've had this big upward movement in price coming into that overhead resistance you just get a little overextended and now it's consolidating a break of 60 is certainly tradable but one thing that i'm very concerned about in this rally that we've had from 51 all the way into 60 over the course of the last couple weeks is this volume. Look at the volume. The average volume is the yellow line and only one day out of this entire rally have we seen above average volume. So not a lot of participation, not a lot of belief in this movement that we've seen because a lot of this movement, if you'll remember, was initially based on those bombings in, in uh, that you know we, we suspected Ron put on those oil tankers in the Gulf. And now you have obviously some increased tensions between the US and Iran. So a lot of that was just based on this, this belief that there might be increased conflict in the Middle East. But as that has subsided to a certain extent over the last few days with the G20 in, in kind of you know the, the side of the market in Wall Street right now, oil is just simply consolidating. I think the most likely scenario is we do see a retracement coming back down to test that old breakout channel at 55. Maybe that 20-day moving average catches up, but I certainly don't want to chase that dragon as it's been overextended based on the back of geopolitical news and not supply and demand news. So that's a little concerning for me. So, so for me, I'm waiting for it to retrace back down, and then we'll have another uh, opportunity for a potential trade in that situation. The next commodity I want to look at very quickly is the almighty gold. And gold, as you can see, has just been on fire recently. Higher highs, higher lows. And as we talked about yesterday in the halftime report, this movement, this type of aggressive movement, this is not typically in, in gold. We don't typically see these types of percentages movements in gold. A lot of it on the backs of rate cuts and increased money supply and you know what the Fed has done, uh, certainly. And when we increase the supply of money into the system, well, dollars have a tendency to go down. And as dollars have a tendency to go down, as we analyzed when we were looking at the dollar index, well, gold certainly has that tendency to go back up. Now, now, even though I'm not chasing it here, I do love what I'm seeing here in the consolidation. It's playing defense at that 1400 level. And when you saw that breakout of 1350 and then you saw the breakout of 1370, you saw it continue to move up and set a higher high. So when you're looking at this just purely from a technical perspective and you want to remove all emotion from the scenario, just focus on price. And so when we're looking at this trend here, you got a price from 1270 and then it pushes to where it gets overextended a little bit of consolidation right here we'll call it 1340 1345 so when it goes from 1270 
to 1340, that's a nice little 70 point movement. And then you see this consolidation before it closes again and then runs again. And then when it closes again and runs again, you see this price movement from 1340 all the way up to 1440, which is a 100 point price movement. So you have a 70 to 75 point price movement followed by a 100 price movement. You're seeing a very similar situation. But what I like from a technical perspective is you're seeing momentum come into it from a trend perspective. And now you're seeing the consolidation similar to what we saw over here. And so what we're looking at is a high base type situation and high base breakouts are one of the one of the best technical formations that I love trading from a continuation perspective. So when you're looking at your continuation patterns, you have high bases, you have cup and handles, you have ascending triangles, you have symmetrical triangles, and then you have it. But the high base is that consolidation that I absolutely love because unlike the rest of the, those patterns that do have a tendency to come back down and test support, the high base shows strength and and stays towards the upper end of the channel and that gives you a very clear breakout potential now for me if you're looking at where this would break out dropping it down into that one hour chart here the overhead daily overhead resistance right here is about 1427 that's on a weekly last week you're looking at about 1442 1443 so if you're looking at the potential breakout this breakout here is tradable you also have a little bit of a breakout right into this range as well right about 1420 so you have a 1420 perhaps breakout of an intraday chart you have the 1425 and then ultimately over here you have the 1442 1443 breakout so there are overhead resistances that you can trigger above if you're a conservative trader obviously you want to see it get back above that 1442 but when the stock when the currency excuse me, when the commodity is trading at 1414, you do have those intraday breakout levels as well that you certainly could confirm above. Silver, silver here, I wanted to bring up silver simply because it's lagging gold. And, and P. Thomas is going to be the guest coming up on the Trading Justice podcast coming out next Monday. And I recorded that podcast with him a couple of days ago. And I, and I asked him the question, why is gold outperforming silver? And, it's, and, and his answers are amazing. And I'll save that to the podcast. But I'm just going to say this. Silver, although it is lagging gold for many, many reasons, some of that industrial-based and some of that you know value-based with gold, but silver is going to have its day, its day. There is no doubt about it. You are looking at a bullish uptrend here. You had a very consistent bearish downtrend. You have an inverted head and shoulders. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. You have a fairly clear level of resistance right there at $15 that it broke back up above. So you have this inverted head and shoulders formation after a very consistent bearish downtrend. Look for silver to perhaps test that 15 level mark. That to me would be a very good buying opportunity. And, and when you're looking at this little consolidation, I would love that to come back down to 15 but it might not do that, and that's where you have to look at that overhead resistance. So even though silver has been lagging, I do like what I'm seeing in the overall trend. I like what I'm seeing in the reversal pattern on the head and shoulders. And I like the fact that it's playing defense between 15 and 1540. So keep an eye on that shiny precious metal we like to call silver. And last, a tackle trading here to, uh, tonight. We have a women in trading webinar that Coach Emily is putting on. And so for those members of tackle trading, let's go support the women in trading. Show up and let's have some fun on a Friday night with the women in trading group. This is Coach Matt for Tackle Training. Hope you enjoy the halftime report. Once again, we should be live again on Monday once we figure out why Zoom and YouTube don't like one another right now. Hope you guys have a great weekend. On the weekend for the pro members, the scouting reports. I'm getting ready to go into that scouting report meeting, and I guarantee we're going to have a lot of great picks coming out for you guys to analyze for, over the weekend.